our fellow members of Nights on Bikes and to bikers everywhere. My name is Bear Wozniak of the EWTN Long Ride Home TV series. Fellow Nights on Bikes member Peter Morton and I put this series of biker safety videos together for you at the inspiration of Ace Fagan, the president of Nights on Bikes USA. Peter is a certified safety instructor with both the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and Harley Davidson. So please feel free to share these videos with everyone. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com, the home of Long Ride Home TV, and consider becoming a Patreon donor and help us produce the TV show. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show and you get all seasons past to all of the episodes of Long Ride Home, plus you get early access to every new episode as soon as we produce it, months before it's released. Once so again, thank you for watching our safety videos. Aloha, this is The Bear. I'm here with my friend Peter Morton. Peter Morton is uh, certified with Harley-Davidson Academy and the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. He's given over 500 classes on motorcycle safety. Uh, we're here because Ace Bagley said we need to do something to kind of get out to our members uh, of Nights on Bikes, uh, more about some, some food for thought for their safety. And uh, we're both members of the Knights of Columbus and both members of Nights on Bikes. And so we're really happy to bring this to you. I'm Bear Wozniak. I'm the host of Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, the TV show. I'm also host of the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show, uh, on both airing on EWTN. The, the Long Ride Home TV show also airs on the Armed Forces Network and, and other platforms. So the best way to keep up with us is to go to deepadventure.com and check us out. Or if you want to go to the Bear Wozniak uh, YouTube platform uh, and subscribe, that'd be really cool. Peter, welcome back. I see, I see you're city, seated between two bikes. <laughs> so, Peter, yes, um, I, I remember I was I was uh, just I was riding. I, I always rode by myself, pretty much rode by myself in Molokai, and then when I came to, to the island of Oahu, I would ride by myself. And then I became a member of the the original uh, motorcycle club here in Hawaii, Sons of Hawaii, the original ones, pretty gnarly biker group. And, uh, and I, so I began to ride with them, and I was unprepared to ride with them. I didn't really had never done it before. It was really quite a cool experience. And then I think after my, I think the first ride was with them, and then I rode over on the big island with them. And then the next ride was with, I think it was Jesse James or some great biker had come over, and there were like 400, 500 bikers following him all over Oahu. I was unprepared. I should have had no business being in the, in the group. I call it the pack. Tell us, uh, I bet you have a lot of stories to tell, too. Give us some of your thoughts about how, if you were going to do a safety briefing before a group ride, tell us what your thoughts would be. What are some of the things we should think of? Okay. Uh, yeah, there's some interesting stories for sure. Um, one of, the, one of the, the biggest stories is the what happens here is um, the... Um, Cherokee uh, ride, which is goes all the way from here in North Georgia to Oklahoma. Wow! And used to that used to garner um, a Trail of Tears ride. Right? That's the Trail of Tears ride. I was going to say that's got to be yeah. the Trail of Tears. And yeah. That was actually the uh, there was I, I rode that in that ride several times, and the uh, it was always an aha moment uh, because the it it's. When you have that many riders in a in a pack, as you say, or in a group, it's uncontrollable. Uh, it's just uncontrollable. I think it's the most and dangerous so, thing you can do as a biker is ride in a pack. Yeah, it, it really is, and you see some you see some uh, bad things occasionally, uh, but don't let that deter you. Uh, just learn how to manage it better. Um, and the the biggest thing what the biggest thing that they did that um, is that they would have a ride meeting before anybody would, would take off. And that many riders, uh, of course, they, you know, it was a, a over loudspeaker and that kind of thing. But, but even if you're a group ride is two riders yeah. or more, uh, that's a group. And you have to learn how to, how to ride together. 
Now, the um, I tend to be real picky on the groups that I ride with. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. There's some riders. Someone wanted to ride on. Someone wanted to be a member of our pack and long ride home, and so I said, "Let's go ride." And within the first five miles, I said, "I'll never ride with this guy again." I totally unable to figure out what he's up to, and yeah. that was it. Yeah. Well, there there was a, there's a, a group that I used to ride with. It was the the Tuesday evening supper ride we used to call them, and it got to be. So, and we rode for gosh, almost twenty years together every Tuesday, and. Um, we would go out and it, it would be, it would be like a, like a synchronized swimming team. You know, it would beautiful, be beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. We would all know what the other was going to do at any given time. Did everybody usually ride in the same formation, same place, same partner, same buddies in front, front and behind. Right. Yeah. And, and the, the nights on bikes, uh, guys that I ride with here in North Georgia are very similar to that. We all yeah. know each other. Well, uh, we know what's happening. But the key is, as you mentioned, is that that pre-ride meeting beforehand. So, what are some of the things that you go over in the pre-ride? Well, of course, where are we going? Yeah, that's what I want to know. I uh, also know is uh, what are we having to eat for lunch? I want to know that. That's the uh, most important, I think. Where are we going to stop for lunch? Uh, who's the ride captain, which is the leader? And who is the the ride tail gunner or sweep or whatever you want to call them? And that's the guy in the back. And then we go over we go over the route. So and the guy familiar. in the back is is a big deal, man. Yes. That that Actually, that. Actually, I would make the case that's that is as e as least as important, or if not more important. Than I the agree. Guy. I always had Grady Dyke be ride, ride tail gunner, man, and and he took care of the pack. He just yeah. did. Yeah. yeah, he was watching over us. Yeah. The other thing that in the ride meeting, what you want to do is um, make sure uh, that you know if you're going to use signals, what those signals are. And MSF has a, a guide to group riding and with some of the, the more common signals. Can you give you us can, a, can you give it give us a few of those? Um, well, start up. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the left turn, right turn, um, stop. You know, you're gonna, we're going to stop. Uh, a lot. Of what, what we use is more of a, a hand down stop. Um, we're going to uh, uh, gas. If you need gas, you're tapping the gas tank. Uh, let's see. Some of the others, are, they're kind of mostly intuitive for the most part. Well, the, we used um, to have the we have the one where if you're going to you're riding two by two, and now you need to right. go single file. I'm just going to get that one, yeah. Yeah. And usually what you're going to do is single line formation. We'll go with the stagger formation here in just a minute. The, the single line formation is when you start getting around curves, the lead rider should have one finger up, okay, single formation. The reason for that, or single line, not staggered, the reason for that is then everybody can take their own line around the curve, whatever they're comfortable with, and not have to worry about the guy beside it. Uh, so you're spreading out to some extent. And then when you go back into that formation, you're back to up. Um, the other thing, when you stop at stoplights, stop signs, those kinds of things, it's fine to bunch up in two lines, but technically speaking, uh, each motorcycle is a separate motor vehicle and should obey that stop sign, for instance, individually. Now, practically, eh, we kind of bend that a little bit, but... Um, Really, suppose it, it, be careful, especially if there's some law enforcement room, uh, to make sure that each of those bikes stop at that stop sign individually, and then take off, because there uh, you are subject to running that stop sign. You're not a group going through that stop sign. Well, that's one thing that's I think significant. One of the biggest things we have with our challenges with long ride home is having guys that have ridden with us, or sometimes people that haven't ridden in a pack together, is. Uh, they're just not being alert, and you get up to a stop sign, and what's the right protocol there? Because as the leader of the pack, I'm trying to time it so we get there where we can all get through, and then I'll look back, and some people in town are 100 feet behind me. The, next, you know, the, the guys right next to me are different, but I'll see guys just looking around. They're not paying attention. They're 100 feet behind, and then a car sneaks in between us, and then, uh, and then or we get through the light, and the other – Guys don't, and believe me, it's a hazard. Uh, you got to be careful where you pull over and wait for the, that next pack, or just slowing down oh, really? and having cars pass you is dangerous. It's 
What do you do about that whole situation? Well, here's here's a coach pro tip for you. <laughs> what most of the what most of the the groups will concentrate on is the rider in front of them, right? That's what they're concentrating on, and that's where most of the stuff is going to happen. That's true, but if you think about it this way, change your thinking just a little bit. You're responsible for keeping up with the guy behind you. So as that guy is dropping back, then you drop back. And if the guy in front of you is keeping track of you, then they'll drop back. And that tends to keep the pack together a little bit. I yeah. see. So pay more attention to the guy behind you, not so much of keeping up with the guy in front. Of you. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely. Or, or if I see a guy that's fading, I'll. I from. I. I do a hand signal low, telling him to come forward. I'll sweep it like this, and because I'm usually leading when we're shooting, they pass that signal back. And a lot of it is because we need to have a tighter pack. We want to get them all in the video too. So it's. Pretty yeah. sketchy, and sometimes I'm signaling to the in, pursuit in cars. In whatever group that you're riding with, too, you yeah. have different skill levels, okay? And it, it may be that you have somebody in your group, in your pack, that um, maybe doesn't feel comfortable keeping up with some other mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So that that's another important thing, too. The individual mindset ought to be ride your own ride. If you feel not feel right. comfortable doing something, then don't do it. Right, very true. So what if you get there later, it doesn't matter. And I know, I think every biker can say that when you're riding in a pack, you spend as much time looking back as you do forward. You're really busy looking to see what's going on behind you. And then adjust your, adjust your speed accordingly. Yeah. Uh, mm. Let's talk a little bit about staggered formation. Um, I was going down to, to Florida. Uh, this was years ago, probably 20 years ago, with uh, that same Tuesday evening group. There was uh, five or six of us going down to take a class in Florida. And um, we were, we always went, the standard um, um, offset mm -hmm. staggered formation. And what does that mean, staggered? Staggered formation is the lead rider ought to be, if you're going down the road, the lead rider is left of center or closest to the center line. L lane the number second, one. Mm -hmm. The second rider is right of center or towards the white fog line. And how far third back? Rider, how far back is he? Is left of center, and fourth rider is. But you're staggered, so the guy should be right of you and back of you. Correct. And the if you think about it, the first rider and the third rider is maintaining at least a two second following distance, and the the distance between rider number one and two is because they're not in direct line with each other has about a one second following distance. So why would you want to do that? Well, a couple of reasons. One is you keep the group together and you're less likely to have somebody come in the middle of your group because there's no room for them. Uh, second is you want to, I see a lot of groups that the, the lead writer wants to start right of center. That's probably not the optimal way of doing it. Yeah, I don't you like that. Be, you want to be left of center left because of center. you're invisible out there. Yeah, you can uh, you see, can your, see like you say, there. You should normally ride in that lane when you're by yourself too, because you can see the oncoming issues. And that's your. If nothing else is going on, that should be your default. And if you're going to turn, if you're going to turn left, that's a much more difficult turn than turning right. And you're in the position to make a better judgment if you're in the left lane. There's, I can't imagine yeah. wanting to be in the right lane, right. the right side of the lane. I mean. So anyway, we're going down. We're going down to Florida, and uh, my friend Larry the fireman is behind me, and he decides, well, let's try something a little bit different. And in Georgia, you can ride uh, two up. You can have two motorcycles in the in the lane at the same time. So we we rode for probably several hundred miles, kind of like uh, chips, you know, the punch and. I hear and, the uh, music right now. Yeah, I, yeah, it was the music. It was it was interesting, and I would not do that with everybody. But he and I have been riding together for so long, and he's he's a very very good rider, and uh, it was it was kind of fun doing that for a while. Um, and I think that was the that was probably the first and only time I've ever done that. Uh, it, it was staggered riding. Well, let me ask you this question, like because I, I have so much experience with long ride home, and also we're filming a show while we're moving, so it's pretty gnarly. Um, when I first learned to learn to learn riding in a pack, if the leader was saying we're going to go left, it would be like a snake. You know, the, the 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 line is going, and this guy goes, and then everyone follows. But Grady taught us you go like this, and then the guy says you're gonna lets you know you're gonna turn get in the left lane. The tail gunner goes out there first to block traffic, 
and then the whole group goes over as at once instead of like a snake. Is that what is the what do you how do you recommend that maneuver? I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, in any of the the rides that I'm involved in organizing or not just a participant, we will not block traffic. Uh, I see a lot of um, a lot of groups that they'll have somebody actually block an intersection. I'm not talking about yeah. that. I mean, when you're running and you're on a freeway and you're turning and you're coming across the lane, just to, as a safety precaution that someone coming up behind uh, doesn't sweep people off the road. I'm not trying to not slow down traffic or anything, but just kind of be there as a safety to let the, to let the rest of the pack know because he can see further back that it's safe for us to come across. I guess I mean. Okay, so you're just, yeah, you're just creating some uh, safety marking. Yeah. Time and space safety. Marking. Yeah, not blocking. That's, that's fine. That's that's not what I'm talking. Okay, what are you talking about with blocking then? Oh, by the way, first let me ask you this: When you go from lane to lane, do you stay? Do you do it like a snake, where you kind of one comes across and the other one follows, or do you like to go all over at once? It depends on um, on what the the riders are comfortable. Either way, it's fine. Okay. Uh, it depends on what the riders are comfortable with and what kind of space you have sometimes you don't have that space to do that okay which is fine uh usually of course you're going to signal that and it's usually a boom 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 in order mm. that will go over but a lot of times the, the group that, that i was talking about when we rode together for 20 years it would we'd almost go together you like you know? one person you like flying in formation it's beautiful well okay so now what about the intersections in in town or out of town coming up on an intersection what is the what do you think is the best way to handle that? Okay, let's go back up to the ride meeting. If you have more than five to seven riders in your group, if it's a larger group, then we strongly recommend that you split that group into manageable subgroups. What a great idea. I never heard of that. That's a great <laughs> idea. And yeah. also, you know what we do is we always let every everybody on their iPhones, this is our rendezvous if we get split. Yeah. So people don't feel like they have to rush and find find each other. If you do, the, the people in the subgroups, they may not be ride captains, but they're certainly lieutenants. Wow. So they're, what, they're, what they're doing is if they get separated, then they take the, the role over to, uh, as ride captains for their next five or seven people. And they, that tends to keep them together. And he may even so that, see, we're not going to all make it through this light, so I'm going to stop the whole group right now, my, my, whole, right. my group and the group behind me. And you're not blocking intersections. But blocking intersections, if you don't have, uh, if you're not a, a law enforcement officer, technically that's illegal. Yeah. You're not supposed to really be doing it. I, uh, I've so never heard of this, this this subgrouping. How many do you think should be in each subgroup? Uh, re MSF recommends that each subgroup should have five, seven riders in it. That's so cool, man. That's a perfect solution. So, perfect. That, so the lieutenants know, and everybody knows where you're going to wind up anyway. So now when you get in open road, the the upfront groups will slow down a little bit and the, the groups that are behind will speed right. up a little bit to join the, the big group. Right. You slow down a little bit because it's dangerous to go too slow. And well, you gotta watch the you gotta watch the rubber band effect too. And and a lot of these police escorted rides they have the rubber band effect where they you know, police car will take off and then the, the next guy will take off and he'll do five miles per hour more and the next guy five miles per hour more. Meanwhile right. the guy in the back is doing ninety. You know, right. Oh, man. I, I hear you. Yeah. Splitting up into subgroups prevents a lot of that. That's just so wise. Why haven't I never thought of that or never had that talk told me? Well, these are some of the things that you go over in your free ride meeting, which is so. I've never heard that, though. Never heard that. Yeah. That's and that's some of the, well, I'm glad you brought that up because what we have, MSF has this uh, module, which is called uh, Share the Ride, Share the Adventure. And what this is, is, and I've got one of these, and uh, anybody can facilitate this. You don't have to be a coach to facilitate this. You just have to do some, some pre-work. Um, uh, I will lend this out to anybody that wants it as long as they get it back to me. Can they, or, get, it, but can they get it on DVD or, or video well, or it, digital yeah, streaming? It charges, charges 50 bucks for this. Um, so, I mean, so, you can buy one. Yeah, and what we're, what we're saying is that we're giving you guys things to think about. This is not a replacement for a motorcycle safety class. This is just some things for everyone to consider. I meant to bring that up in each session. This is not, you're exactly right, this is not a, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Go take a course, come see me and take it. But anyway, they, they share the adventure. I'll even do that one step more for nights on bikes, 
if you call me and give me enough advance notice and it's someplace where I can be and maybe uh, buzz on down there, I'll do that session for you. Well, do you think you can make it to Hawaii? I mean, it's kind of a, you know. I, I don't know about Hawaii, but I can probably make it to, to uh, Coco. Well, you know how it is with the trade winds and all that. It gets kind of old. So what's the, what's another? <laughs> I don't know. It might have a little more uh, uh, per diem on that. To, to get to. So what are some more thoughts to consider riding, as I call riding in a pack, or you call it riding in a group? Okay. Well, I have this uh, this section here, which I'm using for my notes, which can be gotten off of uh, the MSF-USA website, which is Quick Tips mm -hmm. Group Riding. Um, msf.usa okay yep and go in there into the library section and uh down into the training section you've got to go down and find it um now what stuff happens when you ride a motorcycle do you ever have anything happen to you bear like a battery go dead on you on a you know i've heard about this for a year now almost every time i talk to somebody who was with me on those rides yeah i've had batteries go dead before oh okay well, if that happens when you're riding or something happens when you're riding, this is go back to the, the pre-ride meeting. What do you do if somebody breaks down? Now, you'd be surprised how many different ways you can handle that. For instance, does the whole group stop and, and tend to them? Does the uh, just the riders behind that branded bike stop? Do everybody else keep going and just the sweep or the tail gunner stop or we just leave the guy there and forget him. that's my uh, that's always my first choice <laughs> these are some of the things that you work out in the in the uh, in the pre-ride meeting though you know if something happens what are we going to how do we handle it? uh and the other thing too that you want to do that we uh, that i forget a lot is i want to know everybody's cell phone number if i don't already well have the it. other thing that we do when we ride in a pack we actually um have one person designated to get medical insurance cards off of people and, and first of can you know, who contact. And there's that too. All of that comes out in the pre-ride meeting. Yeah. And the, 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 the checklist that you can go through that. I see. Goes through all that. Uh, so those are some of the things. So what do you do? Um, I like, I personally like the, just let the tail gunner take care of it because the less motorcycles on the side of the road, the better for safety mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a lot of them pulled over. Just keep going. Uh, pull over maybe uh, part of the pre-ride uh, agreement may be pull over and at the next gas station and let them catch up later and find out what's wrong. Uh, so th those mm -hmm. are some of the things that we need to work out in that pre-ride meeting. And also in that uh, share the adventure module, we go over a lot of that in detail on, on how to do that. And it's, there's uh, videos and all that kind of stuff. It's really good module uh, to look at. What um, about this whole thing about, when you're riding in a pack and people are blocking, it's just kind of, and you'll see someone, uh, someone is in the back of the pack and they zoom along the left side to get to the front and then they pull over and they block traffic and everybody goes by and then he's in the back of the pack again. I mean, it's pretty cool when you see that happen, but I always feel like it's kind of hazardous. So what, what is your take on, on what, what would be a better way to do that? Or is that, is that, what's this? When you're like in a pack of a couple hundred people, and you're not going through town necessarily. You're out on the road, but you get these little side roads that come in, like a farm road. What what would you think is a better way? What's a good way to handle that? Do you have a strategy well, let me for that? Answer, let me answer that. Let me put on my riding instructor hat on, and uh, uh, that is not a good way of doing it. And there's we we already went over several other ways, better ways of handling that subgroups. Um, Having a, a pre-plan, everybody knows where they're going, those kinds of things. Um, if you if you do do the the subgroups, then that that takes care of itself. But trying to move 100, 200, 300 riders along, I mean, it looks cool sometimes that you have that many going through, um, but it can be, like you said, it can be extremely dangerous. So we've been fortunate uh, getting police escorts. You know, because you what, well, what what happens is there's usually someone in the pack that is a is a motorcycle cop or is a cop. And he kind of wears his uniform and has a couple of buddies, and that's a much cleaner way to do it. Yeah, if he's got lights and and now the police police escort ride, that's you know game on. Yeah, <laughs> that's, but I mean that, that's fine. Consider that if you have a member of your pack, that's a that's a that's a 
that that is a member of the police force. Um, when you ride it in a big pack, there usually are fifty yeah, to hundred guys. Be more than one, uh, yeah. Now there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of rides that will do that. They'll have a half a dozen. Now the, the uh, neat thing that we did a few, a few years ago, uh, Indian motorcycles had a um, um, a group that they came. I up want with. I want one. An Indian. Yeah, were they giving uh, them away they, or? They sponsored, uh, they sponsored a uh, uh, kind of like a wounded warrior kind of ride. And they asked us rider coaches to help escort them. And uh, that was, it was such an honor to be able to do that. And there was probably 60, 70 motorcycles in there. And they had police escorts. They had a, a half a dozen police escorts. And that was something to behold. We didn't have to do much of anything. Uh, you know, I know guys. I have two, two experiences. One was we were in Houston at the Charismatic Center. And we were leaving there with Father Mark Goring and Jay Flunker. And Houston is just this all these high it's just so confusing and there was this guy sitting next to me in a police uniform and i thought that's cool and then i find out he's going to lead us out of houston you know so that that was just such a great blessing the other thing that happened to us is in Asheville, north carolina i got a call from captain stoney's or message from captain stoney's wife saying hey my husband really like to meet you he's a captain in the Asheville police force oh yeah come down we're going to be having mass and you know we ride we think we have our act together. You know, we're riding in formation and we're parking our bikes. And we just think, oh, I didn't know he was going to bring up about 10 of his troopers with him. Oh, wow. And when they rolled up, man, he, he, they made us look like uh, the Three Stooges compared to the way the precision that they ride with. But it also yeah. kind of challenges you to have a wake-up call and think about how, how can, you, can we be doing a better job of riding. We wanted to do a skit where we see them leave and then we all go – Oh, we can do better than that, and then watch us try to ride in formation. But the fact <laughs> is, we didn't have to practice because it didn't come out to get. Okay, we got just a minute or so. What can you do to wrap this this session up? Um, well, we talked about if you get separated, don't panic. Um, you know, it's not it's not the end of the world because you've got you should have your and that happens occasionally. Somebody will take a wrong turn, uh, the, and which goes back to the that's never happened to me. Yeah, on our sure. on our shoot, oh, unbelievable times. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but if you have the if you have a good free ride meeting, then everybody knows where you're supposed to. If go. If everybody's, everybody's listening, got to, got to <laughs> so you you may get there a little late, and you're going to hear a lot of crap from your <laughs> your buddy when you, when when they're missing for seven hours, and you're trying to shoot a, a TV show, and you're on the roll. Yeah, that that's can be. Right. You're going to hear from me for sure. Yeah, but that, that's pretty much it. You know, keep it simple. Uh, make it, uh, I'll, I'll be prepared. We didn't talk about actually before you get there, uh, make sure that your uh, gas tank is full and your bladder is empty. Hu yeah, huge thing. I remember like, hey, Bear, do we have enough time to go to the bathroom? Dude, we've been here for 15 minutes. And the other thing is I, I'm running out of fuel. That that before, the night before, the before the ride, take care of both of those, both of those uh, details. Bladder's empty. Motorcycles full. I, lo I love the way I love the way you brought this to a close because that's exactly right. This is Bear Wozniak. I'm with Peter Morton. He's given over 500 of these motorcycle safety briefings, and this isn't. Uh, he, he's a certified with Harley Davidson and with the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. This isn't meant to replace anything that they're doing. This is mainly considered to be mainly food for thought for you. But we have more. Uh, so if you want to find out more, go to deepadventure.com and you can check out everything that we're up to with our ministry and also our long ride home. Uh, network TV show, or you can go to the Bear Wozniak uh, channel um, on YouTube and find out more about us there too. And when you go to our website, you're going to find out more about Nights on Bikes too. So thanks, Peter. All right. Good to see you, Bear. Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Peter, Morton, and I want to thank you for your commitment to Jesus Christ, to the Catholic faith, to Nights on Bikes, and also to motorcycle safety and for considering some of the things that we've shared with you on our video. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com. It's the home of the EW10 Long Ride Home TV series, and we invite you to become a Patreon donor. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show, and you get an all-seasons pass to all of the episodes, as well as early access to every new episode as we produce them. EW10 provides a limited amount of funding for our TV show, so we count on donors like you to help us produce the show. Thank you once again for joining us for our safety briefing.